Are you a Nagi or a Rio? That's a really strange question. It like, what on earth does that mean? So I'll explain a bit more. Let's recap episode 16 or chapter 59 of Blue Lock. Following a Sagi and Nagi's victory in a 2 for 2 match, this new duo has added Barrow to alignment to make a seriously scary looking team. Meanwhile, Ryo, who's feeling very frustrated at Nagi leaving him, has teamed up with Chigori and Kunigami to make an equally strong team, and the two sides have agreed to face off against each other. This is Ryo and Nagi's first time going up against each other, and it is an incredible match from the trio's ever-changing attacks to Bao's struggle and awakening to Esaki becoming a major threat. A lot happens. It's a neck and neck battle throughout and the score eventually ties up at 4 all. Rio and Asagi plan out the final attacks on their mental battlefield and the final kickoff begins. Following some intense 1v1 battling, Rio opens just enough space to thread a ball through to Chiguri, forcing Nagi, who would be unable to match his speed, to gamble on trying to reach that ball first. And by a hair's breadth, he manages to pull it off, causing the ball to fall to Barrow, whose internal crisis finally explodes as it charges through to score the winning goal in spectacular fashion. After a bit of disagreement on who to add to their lineup, they decide on the speedster, Chiguri Hyoma. Nagi then goes over to speak to Ryo, telling him it was an incredibly close game, which is true, and also that he has faith that Ryo is more than capable of clearing through the next stages to see Nagi again, which once again is definitely true, you know, Ryo is a very strong player, one who I think is very underestimated in the Blue Lock community. But all of that is besides the point of this video because Ryo gives, and this sounds a bit harsh, but it's honestly a pathetic response. You know, he starts talking about, you've changed, you've forgotten our promise, you should have picked me. And Nagi points out, and I'll come back to this, nothing Ryo says makes a shred of sense. Nagi then walks away saying, I don't care anymore you've become a pain. Now I'm aware the following isn't a 100% to the T exact comparison of what Ryo's thinking and saying, but when I rewatched this scene, so, so many thoughts flooded into my head and what I'm about to say is probably the best advice I've given on this channel. This right here, that scene we just saw, is a scene between the Watcher and the Achiever. You know, a man who's out there getting what he wants, making progress, who's living life, and a man who's watching others get what he wants, who's convincing himself of nonsense, who's full of resentment. And I don't even need to ask which one you want to be, do I? But which one are you? You know, truthfully, honestly, which one are you? And it's probably neither. You know, you're probably somewhere in the middle, and so am I. But if you're being completely honest here, you know, no one got to know this other than me and you, but you're probably much closer towards the rear end of the spectrum than you'd like. So younger me was right over here. And so I know exactly what's holding you back and how to fix it. So the reason you're closer to this end of the spectrum is because you don't realize how easy it is to be at the other end. All those things you want, you wish you had, you wish you were. You don't realize that they're all within your grasp and you definitely don't realize how close they are. It's so much easier to get these things than you realize, and I'll explain how and why in a moment, but I need to tell you something that's going to change your life first, provided you have the character to, you know, actually sit and listen to something slightly uncomfortable. You're likely not even aware of how often this happens, but I bet when you see someone either online or in person with some level of success in anything, your brain's first reaction is to come up with something negative about them. So, for example, you see someone with big muscles and it's, oh, well, I bet they're a real jerk and I bet he's not actually happy and he looks funny and he's this or he's that. Or you see someone making money and something just has to be wrong with how they're doing it or they're lying, it'll be boring to live that way. And this next part is going to make a lot of people click off because they can't stand to hear something. 5% uncomfortable, even though it'll improve their life by quite literally 800% in every single way. The reason why you do this and come up with all these negative assumptions is because you don't believe you can do that. And you're completely wrong and I'll come back to that, but if you're being completely honest with yourself, and again, remember, no one's got to know this other than you. Deep down, 
you probably want what they have. And so your brain subconsciously hates the fact that it doesn't have what it's currently seeing. So it has to come up with all sorts of justifications for why it doesn't have that. And again, this really used to be me. In fact, truthfully, sometimes I still catch myself doing this where, so if I go back a couple of years ago, I remember whenever I'd be scrolling through my phone and I'd see some of the things I wanted, I'd always open up the comments and find the ones where people were hating. And if you do this too, you know, it's not actually that hard to find them. You know, most of the comments will be like that. And it's usually one of three things either. Oh, he's lying. He's this bad thing. Or I don't want it. And those kind of put you at ease because, well, starting with that first one, he's lying. That immediately justifies it in your brain because, well, the reason we didn't have it is because it's impossible. And honestly, this one is sometimes legitimate. People do lie a lot online, but more so about how they got what they have rather than what they have. So they're not lying about their physique or their income, but they're lying about not being on the juice or they're lying about how they get that income. So a lot of things you think are impossible, honestly are possible. And it's a similar story of the second and third one. So, well, because he's this bad thing, you know, he's a jerk or he's got a weird nose or whatever it may be. That kind of justifies it in your brain as well, because, well, you might not have the physique you want or the money you want or the girls you want, but at least your nose doesn't look like that, guys. So it's silly, really, but that last one especially, no, oh, I don't want it. Well, of course you do. You know, if you could have that thing, you would. If you could have more money, you absolutely would. If you could have a best physique, you absolutely would. So how is what I've told you going to change your life? Well, you've just shown you're the type of person who will actually listen to someone, giving you information that will benefit you instead of clicking away because it's a little bit uncomfortable. So with that level of character you have, which is honestly quite rare nowadays, I guarantee those things you want are within your grasp. So using myself as an example, I've just turned 24. But if I go back six years to when I just turned 18 and I'm starting at university, I wasn't even really aware of this at the time, but I was quite, well, I was very jealous of these other guys who were in shape, picking up girls and were just generally quite confident with good people skills. And I know this looking back because I always come up with these negative assumptions, as I just said. And so I spent so long just being miserable about it. And I fully convinced myself that there was just something wrong with me. And I couldn't have any of those things, but here's the thing. I know this is a completely different series, but bear with me here. So when I watched My Hair Academia, I saw a lot of myself at the time in Deck. So before I even got any powers or anything, it just started going to the gym and training with All Might. And I didn't really have an All Might to show me how to do any of these things. I started going to the gym anyway. And even though it was far from perfect and I made so many mistakes, as soon as I did, it didn't actually take that long before I started getting compliments on my physique from both guys and girls. Really imagine, you know, within six months you could go from, well, if you're like me, having never even held hands with a girl and being kind of the weird nerdy guy to, well, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the complete opposite experience, you know? And that doesn't even mention just how much more happy and how much more confident I was in myself because of all the progress I've made. I'm not saying any of this to brag. The point is, if you saw how I was before, you would realize that if I can do it, anyone can, you can. It only takes like six to 12 months of hard work. And if that sounds like a lot, then that's the problem. You're expecting it too fast. And because of that, you're going infinitely slower than the people willing to go slow because you're going nowhere. So when I say you're closer than you think, I'm not necessarily talking about time, although sometimes it can be a very quick fix as I'll come back to, but it's more that I'm talking about the difference in what you're doing. All you have to do is just start doing the thing and within six to 12 months, you'll be there. So let's say you want to get in shape. Just buy some home dumbbells and start following a home dumbbell routine. It doesn't matter which one. You don't have to be perfect to get the things you want. So stop stressing about, oh, is it optimal? Is it perfect? Just pick a routine you enjoy. Do it a few times a week for six months and you'll see the difference. It's the best money you'll ever spend, I promise you. And just as a side note, if improving your looks and getting more girls with goals, I promise you from my own experience, obviously as well as going to the gym, just trimming your beard and getting a haircut will instantly, drastically improve how you look. So having done this myself, I now see so many guys where if they just bought a beard trimmer and got a haircut, 
it would literally change their life. You know, it's such a simple, cheap change, but it makes a real noticeable difference. Anyway, going back to Rio, he was so, so close to winning this game. You know, literally a few milliseconds faster and Nagi wouldn't have intercepted his pass and they would have won. He's so close to being at a level he wants. You know, he's honestly got the potential to be one of the biggest threats in Blue Lock, but instead of looking at what he needs to do to get that extra step, he's just coming up with all sorts of nonsense. It was so frustrating seeing him say, Oh, Nagi, you've forgotten I promised to be the best. No, he hasn't. The whole reason he joined up with Sega Team was to learn more about soccer. You know, it looks back to earlier about what I was saying about how we come up with all sorts of negative things to say without any actual reasoning behind it. You know, if you've read episode Nagi, you know, this was the first time either of these two had lost. You know, it was clear to Nagi that to become the best, he had so much more to learn. But Ryu just seemed to kind of expect to be the best anyway. You know, he was the one not taking it seriously. And then there's the whole, oh, but you should have picked me. Well, as Nagi says, that would not have actually made Ryu happy. You know, and I think Ryu probably knows this is just very, very frustrated to have never lost before and then to have lost twice. Firstly, to a team that should never have really been a threat to him. Then to Nag, and then to not even be considered the best player on the losing team. Suddenly, it seems like that dream of winning the World Cup is way out of reach for him. So he's coming up with all sorts of nonsense trying to ease this growing discomfort with him. But where is this getting him? As Nagi says, no one cares. You know, you can sit there and come up with all these reasons why other people shouldn't have that thing you want, or why you can't do that, or you can just do the thing and you'll be there much quicker than you're expecting to be. So I'm going to finish this off with what Asagi says. Rather than aiming to be the one who's being chosen, be the one who chooses. Rather than sitting there and hoping things will happen to you, watching on as a spectator, be the one doing well enough to choose. So let me rephrase that actually as, be the one who achieves rather than just watches. And that applies to everything, you know, even that. In fact, especially that. Because that is a prime example of something that you say you don't really mind or it's not that bad. But in reality, if you could be of a real girl instead of a screen, you would be. So as Kunigami says, if you're going to drop your head and pretend all I've said doesn't apply to you, then you're not going to go any further. You know, instead of hating and quietly resenting the people who have what you want, see what you can learn from them. See what they're doing that you can do. And I won't go into any manga spoilers, but if you have read the manga, you know exactly what this man has been doing, or rather, has the abilities to do in relation to what I've just said. So, now you've watched this, you can go and do whatever you want. But just ask yourself, what are you even doing? Check out these videos here if you enjoyed this because you'll love those too. Drop a sub and like if this helped. Start taking action by clicking the links in the pinned comment. And there's another Nagi video on the way, so I'll see you soon for that one.